we're going to have a, a, a shufty at trolley buses in Santoft, a trolley bus museum. Libby, uh, morning to you. Can you confirm that? I can. It is certainly a trolley bus museum. And according to the website, the world's biggest collection of trolley buses Ooh. is here at Santoft in North Lincolnshire. Ooh, well, passed me by completely. <laughs> and I like a trolley bus. Oh, I do think you know, they were fantastic. Ones here. I think they were a, a fantastic. Paint a few pictures, give us a few colours. Well, to give you an idea of how big the collection is, I'm stood in a shed with 61 trolleybuses in it, and I'm told that this is one of several sheds. Um, varying sort of degrees of restoration. There's a lovely one with a kind of blue and yellow livery on it. One that says Crossland Hill via Thornton Lane, by the look of it, uh, which is red and white, and the lovely maroon and cream livery that, that you quite often see at classic shows as well. But we're here to talk about the London number 1348, which was built in 1939 and served on the streets of London until 1961. Um, it then went to Ireland. Um, Brian Maguire, who is the former director and now a volunteer at the museum, picks up the story from there for us. Yes, the, uh, the London trolley bus took us 11 years to obtain from the Transport Museum in Ireland, where it had um, been sent out there well, 49 years ago. They restored it initially, um, but it then fell into disuse. Um, so we asked if we could bring it back to restore it in time for the 50th anniversary of London's closure, when we're hoping to get all nine existing trolleybuses from London back together again at Lower Stuff at Carton Colville Museum. And she'd arrived last year and I've seen a picture this morning of the, the state she was in. Just describe, what did she look like on the day she arrived back at Santoft? <laughs> um, I think there was some regret that we'd asked for it initially, but we soon got set to and uh, started making tentative inquiries about what was available to restore the vehicle. Took some panels off and things like that. But the, the worst part was the platform, which was completely rotten. We couldn't get on the inside. So we decided to rip the staircase and platform out and rebuild that over the winter months. So that was where we started from. Now, the picture I saw, she didn't have windows with no glass. Um, that's all in place now, but it's all work done by volunteers. How big a job is this likely to be? It's, uh, it's a very big job. They all are once you start taking them to bits. We've um, reglazed the near side. The rest of it, we have the glass for. We've got a team of about four people work on the vehicle, but we're always wanting more, obviously, because it's a way out here and uh, people come from all over the place to run the museum as it is. So the nearest lad is from Scunthorpe. I'm from Scunthorpe myself. We've got a chap from Hull and one from Thorn. We're all beavering away on it and doing our best. We've had a, a quick look around. There are quite a few vehicles here that are in various states of disrepair. How many people are working on this and are you looking for people with particular skills or can anyone volunteer and help out? Anybody can come um, to sandpaper seat frames down, for instance, and, and put some paint on them. It doesn't take a lot of skill. We will always train people to do what they want. We, we have an electrician that came out that wanted to do some electrical work, but he ended up paint stripping a ceiling for us and jobs like that. It's just something you come out and enjoy. We have lots of cups of tea and a good laugh. It's it's not all work. It's you know good, all good fun, really. So really, if you're willing to get your hands dirty and have a go at anything, you could come down and, and help you restore some of the trolleybuses that are here. There's always something to do at the museum. We've, we've got a, a six-acre site. Um, there's always grass to cut, hedges to trim, buildings to paint and keep on top of. There's virtually any skill that anybody has or wants to do, you can do it down here. And Brian, you've been here yourself for quite a long time, 44 years, is that right? That's right, yeah. I moved up here from London when I was 21. When we'd first bought the site, Mike Dare, our original owner of the museum, had his private collection in Belton in a chapel and saw this site, which is a hangar base for sale and decided to create the Trolleybus Museum and, and I thought, well, I'll, I'll go up and help. And I've been here ever since. <laughs> and how's the museum grown from those kind of early days and how do you fund somewhere like Santoft? Oh, it's certainly grown. The first visit that I had here was 
in a lovely November day. It was just really scruffy grassland. There was one prickly bush here. That was the only thing that was on the site. As I, say, I used to do the site work here for 10 years. I was site director, and I've, I've now packed that in to concentrate on vehicle work to, to do that sort of thing. That's more my forte. Remind us where it is, where people can find it, and when it's open, because I, I suspect lots of people... I didn't know about it to be genuine. Lots of people might fancy a, a little look across and, and, and coming down to see it. So where and when? It's Santoft Museum, but it's just outside Belton. Now, Brian's going to give me the exact directions, as he did so very well for me this morning, and he can elaborate on our opening times as well. It's the easiest way is to come to Junction 2 on the M180, down into Belton to the mini roundabout, turn right, and then it's straight down the bottom end to, towards Santoft, and you'll see us on the right-hand side. And when are we open, Brian? We're open all day, Saturday and Sunday. Sunday from 10 o'clock, Saturday from 11. Um, we, we run right into Saturday evening, do nighttime running with all the lights on the vehicles. We've got a beer tent. There's Yay, food there. available and things like that. So, yeah, you can come and have a good time. Plenty for the kids to do. And it's quite a big weekend for you this weekend as well, isn't there? It is. It was actually born of an idea of mine in 1971. All the local people wondered why we were buying all these old buses and putting them in this field. So um, I created an open day and it was named after the gold arming gathering down south. We called ours the Santoff Gathering. And it's grown from then. I think we made about £112 profit in 1971. So we're looking to make a little bit more than that this year. So keep us going. <laughs> so if you, if you do fancy having a look at the Santoft Trolleybus Museum, this weekend is probably quite a good weekend to come and do that. And, and there's a beer tent. Buses yes, there and, is. Buses and beards.